I'm Jennifer Richard Jacobson, and I'm the author of Paper Things. My earliest memory is a time when I was four. I was seated with my mother, and I was probably drawing more than writing, and she was trying to explain to me that people's legs did not come out of their heads. Um, my next memory was when I was in third grade, and I wrote my own book at home about two twins, well, twins, that go to the beach, and I'm pretty sure I was plagiarizing the Bobsy twins. One of the things that I was able to accomplish with this book was that I was able to create a very difficult situation without any villains. You know, Ari is homeless. She isn't being recognized. She goes on for some time being invisible. But really, I think I created a situation where we understand why people don't see her um, and, her, and what's happening to her. I think that it reminds us that there's people around us whose lives we don't know a whole lot about. And the perfect reader for this book is a person who likes an adventure story with heart. I think that all of us wonder, what would I do if I didn't have a home? Where would I sleep? How would I eat? Um, so in, in that way, it, there's an adventure, but um, it's also about people and their interactions and their strivings and their hopes and um, trying to meet the expectation of others. So I hope there's a lot of heart in the book too. The writing advice that's served me best is to pay close attention to what you read and that's a good indication of what you should be writing. So at times I've tried to veer off. I tried to write a book with magic, but I don't read very many fantasies. And in the end, that's what I found, that um, my pocket is, is the, my writing pocket is the same as my reading pocket. The one that comes to mind well, I have two funny stories to tell. One, um, I recently received a letter from a boy about small as an elephant, and he told me all of the wonderful things that I did, and then he said, however, uh, your plot could have um, been tighter, and I can tell you how to do that, so you may reach me at this phone number or my email. <laughs> um, the other story that quickly comes to mind is um, I Skyped yesterday with a group of eighth grade kids in Tennessee and they were amazing readers and writers. I could learn a lot from them. And after I received an email from the teacher and what she told me was that this one eighth grader who has a very difficult life came up to her after. In fact, she said he talked about it all day, but the thing that he said that was memorable is that um, he realized in talking to me that authors are just real people who have done something cool and that in meeting me through Skype, he realizes that he too might be a regular person who couldn't do something really cool with his life. And that's the kind of interactions that I feel just very touched to have. I'm often asked, you know, Small as an Elephant tackled mental illness and Paper Things tackles homelessness, why I choose such difficult topics for middle grade readers. And I find that they serve kids in two ways. For one group of kids who have never experienced mental illness in their family, although that's a few, and or homelessness, my books simply al allow them to explore what if. What if my mom left me in a campground in Maine? What if my family was suddenly homeless? What if I left home? What would I do? For other kids, these stories actually uh, are all too familiar. 
And when I speak to school groups, kids inevitably come to me at the end and say, oh, I am a foster child, or um, I worry a lot that I'm going to be taken away from my mom, or my mother has mental illness. Um, so I feel like for those kids, I'm providing them that experience that says, I'm not alone, that other children have gone through this before me.